today I'm going to talk about the art of being yourself. It can't be that hard, right? Just be yourself. You know, all of those beautiful, well-intended quotes about just be you and it's that easy and it's that simple. And I really think that we um, over simplify what it means to actually reveal your authentic, honest self. And the only way I believe that we can really grow on a community level, on a global level, and how we can really shift in consciousness within our own lives, within our relationships, our friendships, of course our businesses, is the ability to see that it's quite a complex process. And this is why not a lot of people have the patience for that me included in the very beginning. I um, got told to do yoga once and um, I pretty much chucked, a, like I just spat a dummy. I was just like, no, I'm already flexible enough, no. But someone was advising me because I was always so on the go and I didn't know what it meant to really tune into my body. And I didn't listen in the beginning. I just kept going and drove myself into an incredibly low weight and was exercising about 13 times a week. 13 sessions was my maximum in between all the walking that I did to and fro different places back home in Australia. But I was so on the go. I always thought that I was being myself. I was like, yeah, this is me. But really, I was so blinded by the identity that I'd created for myself unconsciously um, via the projections I took on when I was little um, from parents, society, Hollywood, um, the media, and all of the other things that we encounter when we're a little sponge from the ages of between zero to seven, but also stretch that to about 14 years of age as well. So basically, the art of being yourself. <laughs> there are so many people that I'm watching on YouTube at the moment and I am loving it. I am loving famous artists, especially. I am obsessed with music and I love that people use their platform to be able to influence and lead and inspire other people via the sharing of their stories, which is what I'm doing with you guys too. Um, but they're starting to really get fucking real. They are starting to let down their walls. There is a massive shift in consciousness. And when you see the people who aren't at the top because we don't want to put them on a pedestal, but let's just say they're in a position to influence a hell of a lot of people. So if they're almost going by unconsciously, all of the people that follow them are more than likely going to be influenced unconsciously by what they're putting out. And so we really need the people in those positions. And also you guys, like, in your everyday life, you have the ability when walking down the street to influence one person with just a simple smile. Just bringing that conscious awareness to the fact that human to human connection and that love leads everything, right? It's at the center of everything. And so I'm loving, like I'm, I'm, I tear up so much recently. I'm watching Alicia Keys, Shawn Mendes, even Justin Bieber talk about their vulnerabilities, their insecurities about how being at the top and having all this success doesn't make them superhuman and supernatural. They have incredible gifts, but so do you. They have just gotten sort of discovered in a sense by um, the big people who can put them in a position of essentially power and influence, maybe a lot more than let's say you and I could do. Um, but if each of us start to really show up and expose our vulnerabilities, obviously with boundaries, you don't wanna just go, by the way, everyone, here's my container of shit, hold it, you know? You obviously wanna um, talk from the heart and talk from a space of what's for you privately and what's for everybody else. Um, and how you can sort of use storytelling, the art of sharing your journey um, with people to hopefully help them on theirs or help inspire something or activate something or awaken something within them. So the reason I feel that the art of being yourself is incredibly difficult um, and is a journey that I've been on for the last four years trying to freaking heal from this eating disorder and my lowest points that I never thought that I would come across because I was always the girl who was positive, who saw positive in the darkness, who saw the magic in everything, who was holding space for everyone and who was seemingly incredibly happy on the outside. And to be fair, I was. Like I was probably living in a bit of a blissfully ignorant state at the time. But looking back, I was fairly happy. It's just, I didn't have the knowledge and the experience to back up how to find positivity in times of challenge. I didn't have the experience and the anecdotal evidence to prove that, not that I have to prove it, but to, but to myself, you know, I'm on a journey of deep discovery and I love having experience to back up what I say to you guys because I will never teach anything I've not experienced. Um, 
personally, but I really have found that I've, I've really had to uncover what my true identity is and who I really am. And to be fair, for the first couple of years of my life, well, let's say the first 21, that's more than a couple, I was known as the performer. I was known as the space holder, the positive light, the bubbly girl. And so anything outside of that that hit me, any vulnerabilities, insecurities, lack of confidence, people were shocked. Or maybe when I was wanting to just take a step back at the party and not chat, or at the family dinner, not keep the conversation going. If I did any of that, I felt so judged and looked at for being not myself. When really, in that moment, all I wanted to do was be the other version of myself. You know, we all are so multidimensional beings. We're so vast and different and unique that we're not just one identity that you've been put in since you're a kid. And I had the most support from my family to do exactly what lit me up. And um, I had a lot of opportunities, but at one stage in my gymnastics career, I didn't want to do it anymore. And I felt a little forced to do that by my coach and a few other influencing people in my life. And it was because I was good at it. So I understand where they were coming from, but being pushed into that box when I didn't want to be, and I just wanted to dance and I wanted to just do every other thing, I started to get really down and I was like, well, the way to get validation is to be this. And people think that's my authentic self. And this is who Alicia is, put her in a box. Anything outside of that is not herself. And so when I started to really expose some of my fears, my insecurities, my vulnerabilities, and especially when my eating disorder hit really bad, I was in a very weak, vulnerable position. And I don't call that weakness as in it was weak, but I was like physically weak, mentally weak, emotionally weak, and spiritually, I had lost my spirit uh, for life, my zest for life, my spark, my magic. The, the thing I help people reignite within themselves um, in my own sessions these days. But I really had to try and understand who the hell I was underneath all of this identity, who I had unconsciously been molded to be um, and who I was up until that point. And I feel like I was being myself for the version I knew myself to be because I had never experienced anything different. And I think a lot of these artists that are speaking now, any influencers that will share their stories about their journey, they're going to have some point in their story where they realize that who they were up until that point was a bit of a mask. You know, they might have been fairly themselves but a lot of what they journeyed through was a pretend mask in order to be trying to be successful or validated people pleasing just to be liked and to fit in to what other people thought they should be right and so anything outside of that would have been ridiculed judged shamed and all of the other horrible things that people can project onto you that i project onto people sometimes if i have unhealed pain and trauma and people do the same to me and i'm like well that's your shit, not mine because I know it takes responsibility and it takes freaking guts to own up to your part in the story and the relationships that you're in. So a lot of these artists and, and myself included and any other people on here who are interested in self-help and self-discovery, you will have had a point in your journey where you're like, okay, what, who am I really? Like, what is my truth? What does my authentic self mean? Like, what... Who am I meant to be? Who am I? Like, who am I without the mask? Oh my God, should I pull it off? Oh my God, no, people aren't gonna like me. People are gonna ridicule me, judge me, all those things. And so the art of being yourself is one of self-discovery. It is always changing. I'm always discovering new parts about myself that I didn't know existed and that challenged the status quo and most importantly, challenges my closest people around me. So that when I reveal something different about myself, that they've not seen before, it requires them to change and pivot and accept unconditionally. And we live in a world where there's a lot of conditional love. I will love you if, I will love you when, I will love you how, and like, you know, it's, it's never, I will love you reg like irregardless, like, you know, of what you do. And obviously I'm not saying that like, I'll love you if you abuse me or, you know, some of this stuff, but you can definitely say, I love myself enough to walk away. That's what to do in that situation but I'm not going down that path today. So the art of being yourself, your real self, why people don't do this is first of all, I don't believe they're as committed or they're not ready yet to dive deep enough into their soul's journey to really discover the truth of who they are because it's damn scary. Like it's hard, it's the unknown. Your, your brain that pretty much drives the majority, 98% of your day is your unconscious, like your subconscious brain. And that's stored with all memories from the past, who you've always been. 
And so to step out of that, your brain's gonna go, hell no. Nah. Like that inner critic is already bad enough. Like amplify it tenfold when you wanna step into the unknown and do something different outside the norm, outside the box you've been placed in. Oh my God, it is scary. Like it is scary. And you know, I can speak about this fairly mutually now. Uh, there might be times where I'll tear up and get emotional, but I've been through it so many times that I'm just like, fuck, here's another unknown step I have to take. Oh my God listening to spirit, let's go, okay, my soul says yes, let's go that way. And it's not easy, and I think a lot of people back out because it's scary, and I get that. But there might come a time in your journey where you have no choice but to break out of that box. And so that's the first reason. And the second reason, I think, is because it's easier to wear a mask. I guess that sort of is fitting into the first reason, but it's easier to be how other people perceive you to be. It's really easy to just go along with it, to people please, to be codependent in those relationships and to just do what they say and do what you've always done because when you change, as I said, people change around you. People literally have to pivot and change because they're not used to you being this certain way. And so when you step outside the box, they too have to match or meet you there or they will show their pain and their insecurity and unknowingness to sort of be accepting and embracing of your change because it means they have to change too. So it's easier to do that. And I think the final one is because it's really hard when someone actually doesn't like the truth of who you are. That's the killer. And that's where I drop in deep <laughs> right now. So it's easier to be liked when you're wearing a mask because it doesn't surprise people. And when I had no choice but to reveal other aspects of myself, when I could no longer be the shiny bright star, when I could no longer be the performer who had any energy, I could no longer be the teacher who taught 20 classes a week to keep my boss's business going when I wasn't getting any recognition. Uh, when I had no energy to keep the conversation going at family dinners, because I'm like, you can bloody do it. Like, <laughs> why is it just me? Why do I feel all this pressure? Because I've been told I'm the one that sometimes can hold things together and I'm like the glue. And do you know how big of a responsibility that is to place on somebody? Just, it's, it's an equal effort, guys. Um, and I was just always the person people went to, but there was a stage in my journey in 2016 where I had no choice but to drop that and go, I need help. I can't hold space anymore. Something needs to change. Like, I need to change. Like, what, what is happening to me? I'm being stripped physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I had no choice but to look within. I literally had no other choice. And then, be it as 2018 came along and psychology was working, but it wasn't at the same time. And I was looking for something deeper. And in comes a healer who helped me really discover a lot of my authentic truth, which is that I'm spirit informed, that I'm a spiritual being, having a human experience. And then that led me down the spiritual path. And now I'm really coming around 360 to come back to almost who I was, but much deeper, much uh, more appreciative and compassionate and kind and um, grateful for what's in front of me and what I've experienced. And um, I've connected back with my body, my soul's wisdom. I'm learning how to integrate all of this into my daily life and to hopefully help you guys and share my story so that it helps you but it's really hard when someone doesn't then like that version of you so a lot of people play it safe and they play small and they stay in this box because it doesn't I mean it hurts when your mask is judged when you know when that identity is judged oh I was the gymnast oh you're gonna judge me yeah well you know there's more bits to me so I can take that judgment but when you actually reveal like your authentic truth, like you have worked so hard to unbecome the shit that people told you you were. And for me to give you an example is I started like singing and I started expressing my emotion so much more. I wouldn't cry ever. And now I like cried everything um, in my partnership. Like Jordan seen me insanely like no one has ever seen before because I've always held space for other people. Obviously it's an ebb and a flow between us, but for the most part, I'm fairly tapped into my feminine now and like just expressing so many more things to my parents and stuff about like I'm not this version of you that you know me to be like I still have that but I also have this and I also have my introverted side that I didn't show but I also have the performer and I know how to manage her a little bit more so she doesn't get burnt out but I needed time away from that identity to realize what it really meant to even be in that identity what it even felt like 
and I've come up with a lot of realizations lately about how I wasn't in my body when I was cheerleading for St. George Dragons in Australia, when I was at the NRL open launch dancing on stage with Jessica Mowboy and being on stage with Jonathan Thurston. I wasn't in my body when I was competing as a gymnast. The only time I remember being in my body was when I was tiny and little and I would drag my pop into my bedroom and perform, sing and dance for him. And I was expressive like I am to you with the videos of dance that I do. I have to bring that back in because it's the thing that connects me to my truth. But gymnastics took over and all of the school took over and things take over and it starts to mask that feeling, that magical feeling. And so I believe that life is about remembering that feeling what you did when you were a kid, what lit you up. And if you don't know what that is, that's okay. What are you lit up by now? What do you research? What do you love talking about? And keep being guided towards those little light posts, those little lighthouse beams and, and keep following that. And that's your intuition, that's spirit. That's whatever you wanna call it, guiding you towards your destiny. And you're always on a destined path, but being conscious of it's pretty cool. Um, and so, when you're judged then for being like your real self, like I felt very weird and strange revealing my new self, my different aspect of myself to my family. It was a vulnerable version of me. It was a version of me that was like, I'm actually really sick this year from COVID. Like I was really sick. And I have this really weird habit of trying to pretend I'm all good, but I'm, it takes an extreme for me to finally reach out. And I'm, I'm really uncovering and unpacking that, but that's my true self. So I'm scared to do that and ask for help immediately because I'm like, well, that's not what I used to do, you know? That's the classic, I, that's not who I used to be. Um, no, it's not. And I hope that you're never how you used to be because I hope you're always growing and I hope you're always changing and learning from all that you do. Um, but yeah, I'm just, the art of being yourself is a hard one. It takes dedication, it takes commitment and it takes your willingness and your courage to look where you haven't looked before to journey beyond the self you know yourself to be right now it takes courage it takes guts it takes you losing people along the way who won't align with the new version of you and we die a million deaths a day our ego transforms all the time our physical health our mental health at the cells of our body look that up scientifically regenerates and, and renews all the time like all the time we are no longer who we used to be and our consciousness and our body wants to catch up and your body and your soul and your heart wants nothing more than for you to live an authentic life for you to be truly having these conversations that are hard but worth it in the end and so the art of being yourself isn't an easy journey, it's the road less taken, but I feel like more and more people are taking it these days, which is beautiful. Um, but just know that it, it is a one, it is one that you will experience ups and downs, trials and tribulations, as you always did anyways, but you just might find it might have greater meaning and it might really lead you down the path of your true destiny, your, your true magical path, the path that will enrich you, not only maybe materially, but spiritually and emotionally and mentally stimulate you in the best ways and most authentic, real ways possible. And so I hope that little transmission helped today, guys, went a little bit longer than I expected, but I hope that helps and I look forward to hearing your responses.